So uh, we can jump right in. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this small business boot camp on this Tuesday, March 21st. Can't believe we're already in the second half of March. This year just keeps flying by. I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services here at the Arizona Commerce Authority. And we're glad to have you with us today. And I notice we have a number of people from outside of Arizona, and you're more than welcome to attend these anytime you want. Um, and please share it with your friends. There's no cost to attend the, our boot camps. Um, so again, please share that around. We're doing them. So all those that can attend are, are more than welcome. Um, also, I want to share that today, uh, this session is part of the Seed Spot Spring Training Startup Series program that they have. Um, so if you're part of that, you're, you're getting some points to help you around the bases in that program. So thank you for joining us uh, through the Seed Spot uh, activities. So for all those that are new to the Small Business Boot Camp, let's uh, kind of kick this off. We start by thanking all of our community partners. We can't do these webinars without them, their time, their effort, their expertise. Uh, we have well over 100, uh, about 120 different businesses that are partners, and I had about 180, 190 different presenters um, through the history of the boot camp. So we uh, thank everybody for that. Also, those that are new, the Small Business Boot Camp is to help small businesses prepare, plan, and grow. And it is a statewide initiative. We bring in our community partners from throughout the state to help share their, their expertise. And not only is it the webinar that we do every Tuesday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time, it is a content library and access to a series of workshops with our community partners. Um, so the, an example of the workshops, we've been doing some workshops with the Department of Revenue, uh, also with the Phoenix Business Journal, and our next workshop is scheduled for uh, May 21st, I believe it is, and it will be an in-person only on that one uh, in conjunction with the Phoenix Business Journal. But let's jump in and talk more about the content library, because as I mentioned, we do the boot camps every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., but there's so much more. We record all of those webinars, and we place them in our content library. And so in the content library, we have a collection of well over 200, it's about 270 webinars and presentations, even some of the workshops have been recorded and included in the library uh, that you can access at any time. You can see on the screen there, there's seven different categories you can sort by to help you narrow down uh, the topics a bit, um, but you can access those at any time. You can click on them, you can share the links with others. You can download the slide decks that our presenters used for most of them. Um, and it's just a great tool to go back and find information on a topic that you may have missed. Or for example, if you see an upcoming webinar you're interested in, but just can't make it on that day and time, then you know it's available in the content library about a day to two after uh, the actual webinar. So this is a great resource. You can find it at the bottom of the bootcamp web page where you went to go register uh, scroll down to the bottom you'll find a content library so additionally the arizona commerce authority has a number of other programs to help support small businesses we have our small business services our workforce division and our arizona mep our manufacturing extension partnership team that, that focuses on manufacturers now these are all great divisions uh, to help support the strength and growth of small businesses throughout arizona Additionally, if you're looking to start a business in Arizona, expand your business into Arizona, um, or expand to a, another business line or another locale within Arizona, the Small Business Checklist is your tool. It's an online interactive resource that helps people identify the commonly requested licensing, registration, and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal level. Uh, you can also find a lot of other information to help support your business um, besides just those licensing registration compliance uh, requirements. So it's an amazing tool. Again, there's no cost to use it. It's on our website, um, so check it out. With that, we wanna jump into our upcoming sessions. So we've got a lot of great uh, sessions coming your way. Uh, later today at 6 p.m., we have our March Spanish language webinar. Um, if you can join us, it's Dale Utilidad uh, to Sitio Web. 
Um, so um, it will be 100% in Spanish. Uh, so feel free to join us if you're a Spanish speaker or just want to listen to Spanish. Uh, join us for that one at 6 p.m. And then the upcoming Tuesday sessions is use SMOG, S-M-O-G, strategies to get a clearer view of your business. Uh, we're all excited for this one. We've got a great presenter lined up. Uh, we're excited about all of our sessions. Um, the SMOG strategy is going to be a fun one. It's a brand new presentation um, by Robin Reed, the president of the Black Chamber of Arizona and a successful small business entrepreneur uh, himself. And then we have Know Your Target Market. And then part two of our on tracking sessions um, that uh, we're having part one today. And then part two is on April 11th. Um, the nice thing about the three part series that we're doing with uh, our presenter today is they're all great standalone webinars um, to help you improve your abilities to do contracting with the federal government. So with that, that turns a great segue into our presenter today. We have Lori Jesus from the Apex, Arizona Apex Accelerator, which was formerly PTAC, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And I've known Lori for a number of years now, and uh, we're really looking forward to her presentation today on the introduction to government contracting. So with that, Lori, um, I'm gonna turn over to you, but just uh, some housekeeping things. Uh, for those that have questions for Lori, please place those in the Q&A that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. And that way they won't get lost in the chat. If you put questions in the chat, oftentimes they get lost because of other interactions we do. Uh, so again, questions, we put them in the Q&A. It also allows us if we can't get through them all, I can send those questions to Lori and she can get back with you directly um, with your questions. So uh, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Lori. Okay, thank you, Bob. And let me get my screen up. Okay. Oops, we see the double screen. We see the split screen. Okay, let me go back here. Share. And how's that? Yep, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Okay, well, thank you, Bob and Faith for inviting me. This has been really great. Um, this is the first time I'm working with Arizona Commerce Authority, and I'm really excited about this um, potential, you know, future of growing this partnership. Um, I am Lori Houses, and I am the program manager of Arizona Apex Accelerators. Um, and we are formerly, we were formerly known as the Arizona PTAC. Um, we were um, funded under the Department of Defense, under the uh, Defense Logistics Agency, and we have moved over to uh, the Office of Small Business Programs under the DOD. So, um, and we, we do a number of these workshops annually. Um, we also invite other uh, presenters to do um, in-depth training for our clients who are ready for like the GSA schedule see. And today's workshop is going to be laying the groundwork. And this is the basics of um, government um, um, contracting of all levels, federal, state, and local. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I'm sorry about that. I had to figure out what buttons to push. Okay, the uh, agenda is going to be, does the government buy what you sell? Do you have federal contracting experience, cash, inventory, working capital? And do you know where to find um, contracting opportunities? And this is um, really um, the basics for anyone who's been thinking about government contracting, who has, you know, thought about, you know, where do I start? Because when you think of federal government, it seems like it's the big scary contracting that um, is unattainable. So what we like to do is for those people who are very interested in getting into this, we like to create a step-by-step -step for you because not all businesses are the same. Some can start and jump right in. And it's because they may have um, experience 
um, 20 years as a, you know, engineer in an area that they were doing government contracting. So we understand that there's all levels of small businesses out there. And that's what we want to do is help you find where your spot is in this area. Okay, and just a little bit more about the Arizona um, Apex Accelerator. We are we serve um, with our new funding um, agency. We serve all businesses, large and small. So, and they have to be for profit. So, there's a lot of um, questions on well, how do you work with large businesses? They've already made it, but. A lot of times they're looking for small business contractors. So we kind of like to, you know, get you guys paired up together and say, you know, this is a great opportunity. And that's a great way to start your um, past performance, which is really needed in government contracting. All of our services are at no cost. And um, the one thing that we do best is the one on one counseling for your small businesses. Um, and because that is, um, individualized for you and your business. And we also understand that you're running a small business, so it's not like you're going to class or anything. We work with you and work with your schedule. Okay. Okay, so we're getting right into it. Understanding the basic. And this is on a federal level. So, you know, if you're going to be getting into the federal government, you have to be registered in SAM. And that's the system award management. And once you get into SAM, you they will give you a unique entity identifier, which is the new UEI. So everyone who has a DUNS number, that is not even considered anymore. Um, so that's not needed. Um, also, you'll have to know your NACE code. That is your industry um, uh, classification number that describes what you do. And just know that your NACE code is very broad. So I had a client who um, was selling buffalo jerky and he wanted a code just for buffalo jerky. And I said, there's not going to be a code. It's going to fall, you know, under the, you know, manufacturer of meat. It's just, you know, beef. So, so just know that your NACE code is going to be a broad code that you're going to find other things that you don't, you know, provide or service. Um, but it's a six digit code. And if you go to that website, you can um, put in your keywords and start looking at, you know, locating your code. And then um, your EIN or your TIN number for your taxes. So you want to register with the IRS and get that, um, get your number, and that's going to be part of what you'll need in SAM. Okay. Another thing is you want to ask: Is your are you ready? Are you ready for government contracting? These are you know questions that you really have to stop and think about because there's a lot of research research you're going to have to do. And one of the ways to find um, federal um, government past performance, I guess you could say, is in these database, usspending.gov will give past contracts. Um, you can go and run a contract data report in SAM. You can find contracting opportunities. So if you're a landscaper, go into SAM and just put in search for landscaping and you will get a ton of opportunities that come up. They will have, um, you know, some types of set aside or requirements that you have to be aware of. But you want to start researching to find out exactly where you fall in in the government sector. Another area you can check on is a GSA Advantage. So the General Service Administration, they have their own GSA schedules. You can look online and find out, you know, who's selling what at what price, you know. So I like to explain the GSA schedule as the, um, for those of you who are my age and older, um, the yellow book, you know, it's you getting, you get a contract, but you're still, you still have to market. You have to market your business because it's not a sure thing. There's a lot of companies on the GSA um, schedule that do not have any sales. So it's all about marketing and knowing who your customer is. Another thing you have to um, consider is, do you have federal contracting experience? Now this does not have to be big. It can be like a pro card. It can be a small one-time um, purchase. So you want to kind of 
pay attention to those out there that, you know, those government um, contracts that you can, you know, jump on without having to compete. You want to make sure you have cash, inventory, or working capital, because once you secure a contract, you're going to have to perform. The government is going to expect you to perform. And then also um, that falls in line with, are you capable of fulfilling a government contract? Because you don't want to get a contract and then decide, you know, try to figure out what do I do now? You want to be able to execute on that contract. And um, the next one is, do you know where to find contracting opportunities? That goes back up to um, SAM, SAM.gov, if it's for the state, you know, Arizona procurement portal, or if it's a local, you know, city or county, you just want to, you know, research and find out, you know, who's buying what, it, does your industry fall in those areas? Okay, so, if you're if you're um, getting ready to um, register in SAM for any federal governments or you know grants or certification, if you want to get one of SBA certification, um, you will have to be active in SAM. And the requirements for SAM is you have to have a physical address. It cannot be a post office address, a PO box address, or you can't use the address for um, these little mailbox, et cetera, you, it has to be a physical address, either your residence or a, an office. Um, you have to be registered in the Arizona Corporation Commission or the uh, register in the Secretary of State. You have to know your NACE code, you have to have banking information, and you have to have point of contacts for your business. And, and a certain, after you get and identify your business, you will be assigned a UEI from SAM. Another um, area that you want to make sure that you're in is the SBA profile, which is the dynamic small business search. Now, SAM has um, businesses of all sizes, international businesses. It has 1099 workers, grant people. So it's just a big database of people wanting to do um, um, business or transaction with the federal government. The SBA profile is for small businesses nationwide, just in the US. So this is a really good database to get your company registered. And um, we can assist with that because you really want to make sure that you have all these areas filled in for in the SBA profile. Plus, if you're looking at certifications, you have to be in this database. I love this database because you can go right into it, go to Arizona, Maricopa, and find all the landscapers. And you can, you know, look at that if they're your competitor. What do they have that you don't have? So that's a really good database to research, to find subcontractors, to find teaming partners. It's, um, it's just something that I like to teach all of my um, clients to research and find out how to improve their, their business, their service or products. And then you want to have the appropriate documentation. So that could be licensing, certifications, ROC. Um, it's just a lot of, you know, what does your business need to move forward? Because a lot, a lot of time, you know, you're going to need to be bonded. You're going to need to have a license if you're an engineer, you know, just a lot of that to make sure you know what licenses are needed. So, and just earlier I was listening to Bob and he was talking about, you know, uh, just about this. So this, that would be a good place to find out and research search and, you know, figure out what license is it exactly what you need. Okay, know your market. I really stress to my clients, research, research your opportunities. If you have a business, you went into business for a reason, because you're going to sell something that you know, somebody's going to need, you're going to have to research to find out who needs that or who you know, who has uh, procured that. So you want to um, know where your product falls in. Where are these opportunities for you? You want to know and understand your customers. So I like to use um, Luke Air Force Base as an example. So they have a Facebook and what, what they do is they post their smaller contracts there 
And so the ones that don't need to be um, posted in SAM. So SAM, you it's required, you have to post 20, over $25,000. If a contract is over that, it has to be posted in SAM. Anything under that, it doesn't have to be posted. So I, Luke Air Force Base has a Facebook that has um, information on you know what's going on on the base, but in addition, it has um, opportunities that you can find. So, so what you wanna do is look it up, find out what's going on, find out what Luke is doing, because what you wanna do is speak their language. You wanna be able to talk to them instead of just coming saying, I've got a great you know, product here that you know, your servicemen can use and stuff like that, because they hear that over and over. You want to talk to them like you know exactly what they need. So that's gonna, um, that's gonna include a lot of research. And, you, and this helps with the next one, how to market to your customers. Who exactly are you targeting at Luke? You know, at what is your product? Who's using it? You know, they, you know, are they expanding? Do they need, you know, um, infrastructure? You know, do they need electrical? Do they need pavement? What are, What is it that they need? So you need to find out who your target customer is and you need to really, um, know your 30 second elevator speech because a lot of these contracting officers or point of contacts don't have a lot of time. So you want to make sure you let them know who you are, what you do, and why they should do business with you. In that speech, if you um, if you have researched your customer, you kind of want to let them know that you can solve the problem that they may have because a lot of you are experts or will become experts in your business and you will know what is needed or what could happen. So you want to make sure that you bring that expertise into your speech because that's going to speak volumes. That your core competencies speaks louder than any certifications. So always have a business card, you know, so that you can give your business card to them, collect a business card. Um, and that's that's a part of your marketing um, capability statement is your company's resume. That is a must. A capability statement tells them exactly what you do. It's your resume. Um, so you want them to know, you know, who you are, what you do, how you do it. And um, it just gives them so much information. And in today's world, you must have a website. So that capability is going to be a link to your website so that they can see more information. Because a capability statement, depending on who your target is, um, won't have a lot of information because you don't want it more than one or two pages. So you want to direct them to your website so they can see more of your business and more of what you do, maybe pictures of you know, your work. So um, capability statement is something that we review for our clients. We explain to them, you'll have more than one capability statement because the federal government versus a commercial, they're two different customers. So um, we explain the reason why. And once you have this in order, you've got some you know, understanding, um, you could be be ready to respond to a solicitation. The timeline typically takes for someone new who don't, doesn't have any idea of how to get into this market, it takes about 12 to 24 months. Like I said, some people are ready to jump in and they just keep on pushing and pushing. And I had one of my clients in less than a month um, uh, secure a, a small city contract with the uh, city of Phoenix. So it's possible. It just depends on how you approach it. So um, we help you understand that solicitation. We don't write it for you or help you write it because that's something that you know yourself, but we do review it. So we look at it and we say, okay, you know, we need more um, explanation here. Your technical is falling short or the um, criteria, the evaluation criteria states this and this and this, and I don't see that in your, your um, response. So we'll, we'll go over that with you and we'll kind of guide you through that. And once you submit it, then we'll um, do a follow up and, and let you know what to expect. And should you get it, should you not get it, you know, what, what you need to do after that. Okay. The government, who purchased my product? 
products and services. So there are over 2,000 federal agencies, and this is just a, an example of the agencies that are out there that are procuring, you know, services and products. So as you can see that there's just a wide range, I try to, you know, put in Arizona's um, federal agencies, but I wanted to let you guys know that the, um, the government spends about 500 billion in contracts every year. So, and it's gone up, it could be a lot higher than 500. And out of that, 23% of those are set aside um, and to be awarded to small businesses. So you guys have a big, you know, opportunity out there. It's just, you have to learn how to get to that, you know, opportunity that fits you. Okay, and then in Arizona, there's 97 state agencies, and these are an example of who's procuring, you know, maybe, you know, if it's in Arizona Game and Fish, maybe um, there's something out in, you know, I don't know, it, trash pickup. I know that, you know, all the lakes and stuff around holidays, you know, they their trash is um, overflowing because I have come down from one of those lakes. And, and so that's a contract right there is to pick up those trash, you know, trash and have them dump, you know, every so often. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, different types of um, industries that Arizona procures out there. So you just have to kind of do your research and find out some, some are seasonal and some are um, um, annual contracts. There's 15 counties, and these are examples of what the county's, you know, department um, procures out there, you know, the transportation, they um, have construction, rural health, sheriff's departments. So, you know, like I, I have um, several clients who are, um, take care of the sheriff's vehicles, you know, maintenance and stuff. So you just have to go and find out exactly who is procuring your products or services. And then there's 91 uh, cities. So you have the police, fires, parks and recs, you know, exactly where do you fall in if you are interested in procuring with the cities. And um, you just wanna go to their websites and just what I do is if somebody says, you know, I'm here and um, Sholo and I'm interested in contracting with the, the city, all I do is go to Google how to do business with Sholo and dig down from there. So if you're interested in procuring with the cities, that's what you want to do is just go in and find out exactly how um, they procure. Because not everyone, not all cities and counties uh, procure the same way. Okay, and what does the government purchase? So this is some of the procurements. So we have specially funded projects. Construction is a big one out there. Um, products and then day-to-day -day, um, services. So this is just a snippet of what procurement goes on in Arizona. Um, so what I would do is if you're looking at, um, you know, a city, you want to find out exactly they should have a procurement site so you want to find out what's being procured out there and you want to drill down to that point of contact because you want to find out if it's not listed who is it that you need to talk to to find out where your services are needed or who's using your services and this is how to government purchase Okay, so looking for um, opportunities out there, you're gonna find that posting solicitations, like in SAM, um, most 25 or uh, 50,000 are publicly post um, and 150 and over are mandatory. So that's on different, different um, it, it could be the state, it could be the city or the um, county. But within SAM for the federal government, it's over 25,000 um, that has to be posted. And there's just a number of things. You have to have at least two or three qualified bids um, in order for there to be an award. Under 150,000 should be placed with a small business if possible. So that's, that's where you want to really make sure you're capable of fulfilling that contract. Um, because there's been a lot of times where um, 
businesses, you know, kind of fall short um, and really don't know what to do. We had a business call and they said they received a contract and they didn't know what steps to take. And it was really hard because they weren't prepared for that contract and they weren't ready to execute it. So that was a really sad situation. It was good they won, but it was sad because they couldn't perform. Um, you want to register um, uh, for, for any on any of these sites, for city sites, um, state sites, and um, register in SAM just, just to get your company in there and to start receiving bid opportunities because you can sign up or you can do your own re, uh, report and find out where your, um, your um, industry is being procured. Um, you don't have to be certified to take advantage of these set of sites. So there's um, set of sites that are for like women owned um, services, they built veteran owned, you have your minority, which is the 8A, you have um, hub zone. So all of those are set aside for the federal government. So a lot of people, uh, companies think that, well, I'm not certified. If you're considered a small business, that is a set aside for small business. So you don't have to have one of those certifications. You can just be considered a small business. And so when you look at that, um, when you're looking at all these solicitations, there's going to be a number of things that you're going to go through. That's a good learning session for you because you want to see what it is that is required. What regulations are you going to have to follow? So I always tell my clients, look at this, research it, and find out what part of this can you execute on and what part do you fall short? Can you build your capacity to include that at a later date? or should you maybe subcontract that part up, out or should you team up to go after that? So there's a lot of different areas that we can help you explore when you're looking at the solicitation. And the primary methods of contracting is the micro purchase, I think is like the best place to get in for any level of government contracting because there's no com competition and you can get it like on a purchase card or a credit card. Um, maybe, you know, the bathroom needs repairs and it's not a big drawn out uh, contract and they just need someone to get it in, get in there and fix it within you know, a couple of months or so. So that's a small purchase um, procurement. And that's a good way to start your um, past performance that is so needed. So anytime you're thinking about um, the government and contracting, really look at the purchase card and find out who's in charge of that and what their needs are. Get on their vendor list or whatever they may use to look for these small businesses that they can just select without having to have you compete for it. Um, and then we have the other simplify acquisition process, seal bidding, contract by negotiation. And so I wanted to focus on micro purchase because this is an intro to government contracting. So I wanted to let you know that that's really the best place to start. Then you'll move into the simplified and the seal bidding and a contract by negotiation. Another good place to start is prime contractors. So prime contractors are the, are the contractors that have won the government contract. So um, in federal, all the way down to local. So if they're building a complex or if they're repairing IT services and it's a huge, it's in one of the large buildings or whatever it may be, they're always looking for subcontractors. A lot of small business always say, hey, you know, they already have their, you know, sub, subs already lined up. Not all subs work out. So I know of a prime contractor who did have all of their subs and their electrical sub did not work out. And so whoever was, um, whoever was in line, they, they're just looking for someone to fulfill it because they know they have a timeline. And so you need to make these relationships with these prime contractors. Do your research. What, what are they looking for? Who have they subbed before? What type of job is it? How large are the jobs? You know, what is it that's needed? They're private companies. So they're, 
they have their own onboarding process and you want to make sure that they know about you and that in some states, I mean, not some states, some federal um, contracts, they have the same set aside thresholds as the government contractor. So you would have to, you know, if you're a um, woman owned small business, they may be looking for that because, you know, that's going to only help them on their contract. Um, and you don't have to have a current contract to market to them. You just want to let them know who you are, what you do, um, really research them because you want to, again, use their language to speak to them because there's nothing better than someone talking to you and you totally understand what they're saying because you're trying to let them know that you're qualified and you're able and capable of providing what they need. So you don't want to come in and not really um, talk to them about what they're doing or what their needs are. And there's also multiple vendor awards. When you get into um, contracting, um, there's different award vehicles. The GSA schedule is one of them. And I explained to you, it's like the yellow book. They have to choose, you know, you have to market to them to make sure that you stand out. Um, the IDIQ, the Matox, and um, there's a lot of Matox out here, and that's always in construction. There's multiple awards. That's what that is. Um, purchase agreements that could be regional, statewide. We have um, several uh, cooperative purchasing agreements in Arizona. So if you're looking to, a lot of school districts use that. So if you're looking to do uh, business with the school district, you want to find out if you need to be on that co-op. Co -op. Um, in order to, you know, contract with them. And then you have to state white contracts. And then um, everyone should have some type of on-call list, qualified vendor list. Um, the cities will usually have this. And you want to find out how do you get on that list. If you're interested in contracting with them, you want to talk to them. Sometimes they just say, you know, um, just send us your name, send us a little, a little bit about your business and others have a full blown, you know, register here, you know, select your vendor, um, your industry number, all of that. So you have to find out exactly, you know, who you're working with and what they expect from you, because you can't just say, okay, I'm qualified for this. They want to be able to, to locate you in their system. So how do I know the government, if government contracting is for me? You want to do your research and find out if the government buys the product or the service that you're selling. So that's the research you want to find out. How often does the government purchase this? And you can do the statewide um, research. The federal procurement data system um, is out there, and I believe I have it on one of my last slides. You can click onto that and just put in your industry code or put in your keyword and find out, you know, nationwide how much the government has, you know, awarded in contracts. Um, it'll give you a, a total number of how many contracts have been awarded or how many times they have, um, they have paid for services. And then this is the big one. Are you capable of fulfilling that contract? You know, do you have the material, the time, the staffing? Because once you receive, uh, receive a contract, they're not going to pay you up front. You're going to have to perform and be able to carry your business, your subs, your staff, the overhead um, for at least a month or depending on what that contract invoicing uh, requirements are. So you have to come, um, you have to research and you have to, before you sign that contract, find out all of this stuff before you say, yes, I can, you know, execute this. Um, and then um, you just um, want to be, this is not a requirement, but it's because we have a lot of international businesses that do business with the government. But um, it's, if you have, if you're a U.S. citizen and all of, you know, business in the U.S., they, these are um, areas that you would qualify for certifications. And certifications definitely can help but they're not the thing that pulls your business to the top. Um, you wanna have cash on hand, uh, purchase uh, working inventory um, or staffing, whatever your needs are to fulfill that contract. 
um, you definitely want to have an accounting system. I know QuickBooks, the SBDC does offer classes on QuickBooks, and that's a really good system to use if you're starting out. Um, you want to make sure you're credit worthy. You don't want to have any delinquencies uh, in your taxes, especially because it'll come up in your SAM registration. So you want to make sure your credit is good. Not only that, it's if you're in the industry where bonding is required, that's going to um, help if you're if you have good credit. Um, and if you have any experience in government contracting at any level, that's definitely going to help because what the government likes to see is that you've done this before. Even if it's small, you know that there's requirements and regulations that you have to follow. So that's going to be a big plus. And then always, do you know where to find these contract opportunities? I can't say it enough. You have to research. You have to research to find out where exactly do I go to find these contracts. And once you find that out, it's not going to be instant. You still have to follow the steps of marketing. You know, what is it in what is it that you want them to know and what is it that you can take care of for them? So you have to do research on both sides, you know, how to build and make your company stronger and then find out what the government needs from you. Okay, so how does the government help small businesses at all these levels? So the federal, again, the 23% of all purchases go to qualified small businesses. So if they were not to reach their 23%, that would mean a lot of businesses nationwide did not qualify or weren't able to perform um, for the federal government. So um, if you see the top bullet point to 150,000 or smaller contracts should go to qualified small business. So they put that out there because they really want to make sure that you are ready for their, their um um, opportunities that they put out there. And um, we'll go into a little bit more of what the uh, percentage is for these um, set aside women owned and um, small disadvantaged business service disabled veteran owned small business and hub zone. And then with the state, it's the same thing 150 to qualified small businesses. They do have a DBE program and an SBE program. So um, they, it just depends on what what the requirements and regulations are once they put out a state contract. So I know the blind and disabled, you know, they have a play in that. You want to make sure that um, you go and research these, research um, to find out how they're procuring this because you don't want to end up um, going after or bidding a job that you're not qualified for. I just recently had a client go after a services they built veteran owned small business set aside contract with the VA and he wasn't even a veteran and I said they will not look at all the work you put into this so you have to understand how they're procuring and if you qualify so don't just you know this is something I can do and this is I you know I have all of these I have the equipment whatever it is when it's set aside for something other than what you are. Um, city and local, you just go in and ask, I put down there, you know, with like how to bit, do business with whatever, um, with whatever state, you know, I mean, city or county that you're looking at. So the, like I said, they'll have their own uh, qualified vendor list or registration in their portal that you want to make sure that you get your business in. This is not coming up. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide. It's barely filling in. Okay, let me go and I'm just gonna fill it in all the way. Okay, so these are the set aside for the federal government. The woman owned um, 5% of federal government contracting should go to um, women owned and this has been an increase. The small disadvantaged business that includes the 8A certification used to be 5% and they have increased that to 12%. So all of you that are minority owned businesses, this is your area 
and the number has gone up, which means that's great because there's more opportunity out there for you. And then the hub zone um, certification, that's 3%. Ever since I've been working with this program since 2005, I've never seen the federal government hit this goal of 3% um, certified businesses. Um, the services they built veteran owned small business have recent, has recently moved over to SBA and that remains the same at 3%. So you wanna make sure that, that if you qualify for one of these, um, contact us and we can, you know, kind of go over the certifications because a lot of people think that once they're certified, the contracts are going to be pouring in. And I look at a certification like your diploma. Once you graduate it from whatever school you graduate it from, you felt that you were qualified to do, you know, um, work in the, 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 the degree that you got. But if you're sitting home holding your diploma, nobody knows that you have graduated with this degree. So the same with certifications, you have to go and market it because if you got your sort of certification, especially the 8A, people are not gonna be knocking on your door saying, have I got a contract for you? That you need to go and market it and make sure that that's a complement to your core competencies because you know, if you're a uh, women-owned small business, there's about 5,000 more women-owned small businesses out there that are probably doing the same thing. You just have to make sure you know how to leverage it. Why are you getting certified? Is the contract that you're looking at that you researched that you found set aside for a women-owned small business? Even if you are qualified for that business, I mean, for that contract and you're not a woman owned, you can go and look in the SBA profile to see if there's someone you can team up with that could complement what you can provide to that contract and they can come in and come in with the women owned small business certification. So that's a whole uh, counseling session that we, we like to sit down with our clients and kind of let them know all the opportunities that come with certification, but at the same time, let them know that what are their thoughts on leveraging this certification? Okay, next one. Research, that's, there's, there's that word again, research solicit, solicitations and procurement sites. So for federal, you wanna go to sam.gov. In state, you wanna go to the um, procurement, Arizona State Procurement Portal, and those links are at the bottom. For uh, city and local, like I said, go to Google and say, you know, how to do business with. So there's the Mesa. I have Mesa down there and I have Glendale down there. And so you want to find out, you know, what, you know, requirements do they have in order for you to, you know, bid on one of their opportunities. And here's some procurement resource, the SAM.gov. You, it's the old CCR, FBO, FedBizOps, PDS, and ORCA. So those are way, way, you know, back before 2010. And then this is the federal procurement data system, the FPDS that I talked to you about, about finding old, uh, well, past contracts that uh, the federal government has awarded. So you can go and find out, put your keywords into that and find out you know, what agency has procured. You can find out who the prime contractor was. You can find out you know, it, what type of service they requested. There's a bunch of information you can find out on the FPDS um, site. And then the dynamic small business search, which is the same as the SBA profile. If nothing else, you know, play around with that database, find out, you know, who's doing what you do, you know, and if you're a landscaper, maybe you need, um, maybe there's a bundle contract with housekeeping, you can find out who's doing housekeeping, and maybe go in and, you know, team up with a small business and go after that contract. You have subnet, which is subcontracting uh, primes that put, not all primes um, use this, on a regular basis, but then subcontracting uh, opportunities on this subnet. U.S. spending, it's past, you know, 
history of what the government has spent, uh, procurement uh, forecasting, future opportunities with, with the federal government, and then our website, Arizona PTAC, and there's more procurement resources on our website. And then our new funding agency um, from the Office of Small Business Program uh, under the Department of Defense, the Apex Accelerators website, you can read more about our new uh, program um, and where we're going moving forward. Well, who's going to help me? So. The Arizona Apex, we will assist you at no cost if you have experience in government contracting or have past performance or understand what you're getting into. It's, this is not um, this is not a uh, uh, a hard requirement. It's just we want to know exactly where you're coming from. Um, if you have a unique skill set that is needed immediately by the government, that is prime time to jump in and we can help you along the way to um, get in. And that's by doing research. If you know something's coming up and the you have what the government needs, that's the time you want to you know, get in there and take advantage of what opportunities they have um, out there. Um, if you're financially stable um, and if you qualify, qualify for any certifications. We do have companies that come in, they just want to have that status of a certification, maybe veteran owned, service disabled, woman owned. So we can help you get into that. And we, we can help you um, achieve those certifications. Um, if, you, if you're not quite ready, uh, we work hand in hand. We're co-hosted by the SBDC under Maricopa Colleges. Um, if you don't have a business plan, um, you haven't refined your mess your uh, your message your elevator speech. Um, they can check do a financial uh, feasibility for you. Um, they can explain to you how to do market research, um, and then understand the profit and loss and profit margins better for your company. So if we feel that you know you need uh, assistance in those areas, we'll refer you to SBDC but we will still continue to work with you on your government um, adventure. So uh, don't think that it's a handoff. It's just that the SBDC provides services that we don't provide. And so we like you to, you know, go and, you know, find out how to understand your, you know, financials better. And this is the Arizona APEC staff. Uh, again, I am the not the interim, I am the program manager for the Arizona Apex. We have Nicole Jackson, who's our procurement specialist for the Phoenix and Mesa area. We have Bob Mucci, who's located in Sierra Vista. He's our part-time uh, procurement specialist. We have Amanda Howard, who's our program coordinator in Glendale, and she is um, helping with SAM assistance since there's such a big demand, she's um, helping us out on that. Then we have Kate Dinge, our administrative assistant. And that should be it. Okay, thank you. Questions, I see a lot of yeah, chat. Yeah, we have some questions, Lori, <laughs> and you may have already answered many of them. Okay. We, uh, we got a couple minutes to go through them real quick. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna start at the top. The first uh, one is what is the minimum resource load that is needed? Lawyers, accountants proposed, so mm -hmm. interpreters, cash flow minimums, documents required. Well, the, you mean to work with the with our program? Is that, I, I guess to get contracts, it might get, be a too general to get, question. Well, um, yeah, because there's there's a lot of areas that you know. The one thing I have to say is for government contracting, they're going to look at your past performance because a lot of their contracts will say you know send in three past you know, references. So. Uh, you want to make sure you have those references and that those references are good. Um, and then uh, another one is to make sure you have that cash flow, make sure you're financially stable. So, um, you know, if, if the government comes and you're making masks, let's say, and um, when COVID hit, people could make masks, but they weren't ready to send out 100,000 masks nationwide so you want to make sure you're ready and if you're if you don't have that capacity how are you going to build up to that capacity I, I, um, I hope that answered yeah so real quick i just want to remind everybody that's here with the seed spot program your password for 
credit for today is government. Um, so you may need that um, to get your credit for being on this webinar. So again, that password is government. Um, so uh, we had a couple of questions come in just real late that I wanna address real quick. It says, can you please go back to the contact slide? We're going to share this slide deck with the recording. So in about a day, um, you'll be able to view this recording and download the slide deck. We'll put in the PDF version. So those links that she, that Lori has in there will be clickable, um, should be mm -hmm. clickable. So you can access all that information at that time. Um, another one that's kind of come up in different ways is how, how do people find those contacts, those point of contacts, especially for local governments? It's called drilling down. <laughs> you need to go to the city and don't don't just if you have a number or an email and they say I'm not the right person, don't just stop there. You need to ask them, well, who could you know, who could I talk to? Can you point me in the right direction? Because I've had one client who is determined to get in contact with DC right down to the federal uh, the Forest Service um, contact in DC. And I said, Good luck. I don't, you know, I don't have that contact in DC. And sure enough, he went all the way and got that contact. And he said it took him about a good month to drill down. He said, but it's possible. You just have to keep asking the questions. What is it that you want? You know, I want to know who who's, you know, who's procuring my industry, who is the point of contact, who's, you know, purchasing, um, and what are the requirements, what department do I need to sign up? You need to start asking these questions because sometimes you get somebody who has no idea what's procurement. Well, that's our procurement purchases supplies. No, we want to know who's doing contracting, you know, procurement. So you have to just keep asking these questions and drilling down. That's why I said a lot of research is done uh, by these successful, you know, businesses that have these contracts. So you need to research and drill down because the person that I have on my list may have retired, you know, and is doing something different. So, so all these lists that, you know, we start to create, we knew, we know that they're outdated because a lot of people have, um, have retired, have moved on. So you just need to drill down and keep on and keep that relationship. What you're doing is building that relationship with that, with that city or that county that you're looking at. Well, we are right at time. The last thing I want to share was the response to one of the questions. Um, and I'll give Lori a copy of the questions we didn't get to so she can try to answer those either at the beginning of our next session uh, or directly to you. But uh, the services of the Apex Accelerator are available in every county. Uh, there may not be a person in the county, but Lori can work and her team works yep. through Zoom all the time. So um, if you are in Arizona, uh, you can access that. For those that are outside of Arizona, there is an Apex Accelerator contact somewhere in your state. Yes. And you'll be able to work with them as well um, because it is a national program. Yes, definitely. Thank you. So with that, I want to say thank you, Lori. We, again, we are right at time. So thank you for this great presentation. Uh, we hope everybody enjoyed it and got some benefit from it. And we look forward to seeing all of you next Tuesday for our next boot camp session. Until then, everybody have a great day and a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arizona Commerce Authority. I appreciate it.